the semifinals here at the Little League Softball World Series in Portland, Oregon. Who will be the third team to join them? Will it be Louisiana or Mexico? This quarterfinal coming up. This is how our bracket looks. We started with eight teams today. Oregon and North Carolina have already punched their ticket. They are in the semifinal. We still have to set the second semifinal to, for tomorrow. Welcome to Alpen Rose, Courtney Lyle, alongside two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith and two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough. And we've seen some great softball from these young athletes who you can just tell they love the sport. Well, this is grassroots softball. That's what it's all about. This is community baseball. And I love the fact that all of these young girls get to play with their neighbors, their schoolmates. There's nothing better, Amanda. And better yet, their families are here to yep. support them. They're cheering them on. They're having so much fun just to be here and experience the World Series. And you know they want to win. Absolutely. So we started with 10 teams when pool play started on Wednesday. We're down to eight teams now. And all the athletes you see are ages 10 to 12 when this sports start when the sport year started. We're going to play six innings on a 60-foot diamond. So that's like it is in the college game, but the pitching distance is shorter, only a 40-foot pitching distance. And we will get to see everybody play because there's minimum mandatory play. So everybody will get to come up and have at least an at-bat. Michelle likes this tournament so far because it's been all about the lefty pitchers. Bridget Bowling was outstanding. Ten strikeouts in the game, a shutout to propel Oregon. Yeah, and then for North Carolina, it was Campbell Shane, another lefty. There's been two shutouts by left-handed pitchers, and you guys, we have another lefty coming up in this game for Mexico. I can't wait to see how this one goes. Of course we do. Another lefty in the circle. <laughs> Louisiana and Mexico battle for a spot in the semifinals when we come back. Getting set for this quarterfinal here in Portland, Oregon. Winner going on to the semifinals between Louisiana and Mexico. And getting to know this Mexico team, there's a lot of personality and energy on the field and in the stands, Chris Budden. <laughs> yeah, Courtney, if you're looking for a spot to sit over by the team, Mexico fans is the place to be. They love to have fun. They love to chant. They came out with their signs and their Mexico flags. And the girls on this team have been having a blast. When you watch them off the field, they're trading pins with the other American teams. They're getting them to sign their books. They have little questionnaires that they had other friends uh, fill out. And if you ever get a peek into the dugout, they are always dancing. This Mexico team so much fun to watch. Yeah, when we talked to the coaches, they told us about every player. Oh, she's always dancing. She likes to laugh. That was like about every player on this Mexico team. And also strong. Yes, very strong and happy. <laughs> For Louisiana, this is the lineup that Mexico will be facing. Now, they're let off by Haley Peterson, who, you know, casually hit for the cycle in pool play in one of her pool play games this She week. not only <laughs> hit for the cycle, Courtney, she hit for the cycle plus an extra home run. So she's hit two out-of-the-park home runs in this tournament. Seven hits total, six RBI. And in the circle for Mexico, Jenny Robledo has carried this Mexico team. Well, Robledo's going to be that third lefty of the day that we get to see here. She likes to work that curveball as most lefties do. She's got a fastball and a slider is kind of what the coaches call it, but it's it's a curveball. It's going to move away, but I love the fact that she is a good all-around athlete. She's got a good arm. She's a fast runner, and guess what? She wants to someday hopefully play NCAA softball in the States. How about that? I love it that these young ladies, no matter what country from there, are they're dreaming. Dreaming for bigger and better things. Yeah, you saw there her favorite player, Monica Abbott. First pitch strike from Jenny Robledo to Haley Peterson. Haley Peterson was just outstanding. It was against Canada that she hit for the cycle with two home runs. When you have a day, you have a day. That was a day. I mean, that fifth hit bat, that's when she hit that second home run, too. You know, so she had hit for the cycle. And then that, sorry, that last hit bat that she hit, which was her fifth one, she hit a home run again. And what an I mean, unbelievable day. Well, Robledo comes out with the velocity on the first pitch. Immediately second pitch, knowing that the power that Peterson has throws that changeup. So now she needs to mix some speeds. Haley Peterson, too, right on top of the plate, crowd net. And Robledo is going to win the first battle with Haley Peterson. Robledo is in both sides of the strike zone, mix some speeds, and then comes right back upstairs. Great velocity, 61 miles an hour. And just gets it right past Peterson. 
Good battle, power versus power. Bailey Nelson is the catcher for Louisiana. Takes a first swing at the pitch from Robledo. She's had a hit in her last three games and also scored in the last three games for Louisiana. And this Louisiana team was unfortunately earlier on in the tournament no hit by a lefty in Campbell Shane for North Carolina. So they've seen a couple of lefties in this tournament already looking for them having that experience against Campbell Shane to be able to make some adjustments against Jenny Robledo. Well, one of the things that sticks out to me, Amanda and Courtney, is that coming into this game, the Southwest has struck out 28 times for that first out of the, the inning as well. 29 strikeouts in this Little League World Series. So a Coach talked with us. He mentioned, hey, we need to make sure we, we, we barrel up the ball a little bit better. We've been chasing stuff high in the zone. And, and that's a good take laying off of that pitch that is up in the zone. Amanda, you saw this team at the Southwest Regional. I mean, they can hit, but had a little nerves to start the World Series. Yeah, and I think they're talking about a little nerves in their regional, too, in Waco. Nelson reaches for it. Vasquez makes the toss. Two down. Yeah, they really felt like this was one of the better power-hitting teams that they've had, and they thought that in state. Whenever they were able to, to win state and then make it to regionals, but then once they made it to regionals, the, the nerves started to kick in. And he hasn't, Coach Windell, the, the manager for Louisiana, hasn't quite seen that, that same offensive team here in Portland or also in Waco. Second year in a row that River Ridge, Louisiana has represented the Southwest in Portland. Yeah, they got third place last year. Mm -hmm. Robledo ahead, 0-2 on Kayla Giardina. Good velocity coming in at 62 miles an hour. Two strikeouts in this inning for Ginny Robledo. Scoreless as we go to the bottom of the first. Bottom of the first, first time up for Mexico at the plate against Louisiana. Winner of this game goes to the semifinals. This Team Mexico lineup. The first three hitters in their lineup are hitting over 300 this week at the Little League Softball World Series. Well, actually, they've got six players in their lineup that are hitting over 300. I love the fact that they can hit the ball. And guess what? They've only struck out 11 times in this Little League World Series. Good bat control. Yeah, that's a big contrast compared to the now 30 strikeouts for Louisiana over this tournament. And yeah. in the circle is Kayla Giardina. Yeah, Giardina is a pitcher who has experience here from last year pitching at the at the World Series with this Louisiana team. She'll keep the ball low, work a drop ball, and also a drop curve. Has only thrown 10 innings here at the World Series, so she should be pretty fresh as they, they've used some other pitchers throughout the tourney. Giardina told her teammates last year after they didn't come home with the title from Portland that they would be returning. She's been telling them that all year. Valeria Vasquez leading off the 300 hitter. She got a couple of hits in her last outing and that was against Hawaii who is a really talented and undefeated team here at the World Series. We'll be coming up after this game. Exciting team to watch. Yeah, that's our final game of the night. We'll have Hawaii and Italy facing off with the last spot in the semifinals up for grabs.
Team Mexico has certainly been the liveliest in the dugout. You can hear him chanting right now for Valeria Vasquez. First batter is a strikeout for Giardina. It's a good sign for Louisiana that Giardina starts with a strikeout. Fastball on the outside corner going up against a lefty. And Vasquez unsure but just trying to protect the plate with two strikes. This is Eton Daly Shapiro trying to beat the throw. Igor Chapiro is the manager oh, that, of Team Mexico. His daughter was the one that was just at the play. This is Jenny Robledo stepping in now. This team is out of Mexico City. The first time a Little League team from Mexico City has made the World Series since 1998. Robledo lays down a hit. And it gets away from Katie DeLatte. Robledo slid so hard, the base flew off. <laughs> oh, she's going to put it back down. That'll be a single and an error on the left fielder. Oh, I love the way that she goes with this pitch on the outside corner. Doesn't try to pull it. Just going to slice it right down that left field line. Gets it inside of the foul and chalk line and advances to second base on the miscue. And right before that pitch, I was going to say, don't be surprised if Jenny Robledo, the pitcher for the Mexico team, who was up to bat, just has a day at the plate. That's what we've also seen from every pitcher so far. They're hitting for themselves. And they're finding a way to contribute not only in the circle and defensively for their team, but finding a way to get on base and score runs and do things offensively. Marion Hernandez with a runner in scoring position and two outs. Mexico has been able to put up some runs this week. They played at 13 against Iowa, eight in their last game against Hawaii. Or excuse me, they lost eight nothing against Hawaii, but that game against Iowa was big with 13 runs. Won their first two games here in Portland. a good change up from Giardina pitch them in my mind going up against Mexico a team that doesn't strike out a lot puts the ball in play she's gonna have to have that pitch to keep them off balance two strikeouts in that inning for Kayla Giardina no score let's go over to the second We've had some big moments today in the quarterfinals here at the Little League Softball World Series. Bridget Bowling of Oregon, 10 strikeouts in that 2-0 win over Pennsylvania to send Oregon to the semifinals. But I really personally loved how the team from North Carolina came out so aggressive and Lauren Vanderpool got them off right with an inside the park home run. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, she turned on her burners as she was running yeah. around the bases. And it's like when she hit second base, she's like, I am going to score inside with the park home run. And she got it. Yeah, when you have a pitcher in the circle um, that is throwing gas and getting it done, I mean, you can't, uh, can't ask for a better result for that North Carolina team. Who's undefeated. Yeah, Campbell Shane was just uh, smoking the ball. 12 strikeouts. Yep. Wow. Five and oh now. Yeah. Ava Burkett will lead off the second inning. She's their returning shortstop from the team last year. You know, all these players fill out these questionnaires for us so we can get to know them a little bit better. And 
She told us she does wash her hair on winning streaks, which was not what we heard last year. Because on her form, she said, last year I wasn't cooperating, and my mom filled my form out, and she told you that I didn't wash my hair when we were on a winning streak, and that's not true. She wanted to correct that. <laughs> she wanted to make sure that we were factually updated. So I filled out my own form. That is yeah. hilarious. I laughed out loud at that one. Well, wasn't cooperating means I didn't want to fill Did, out my yes. questionnaire. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so mom filled it out for me, and look what happens when I don't take responsibility and do it myself. Exactly. It was great. Those questionnaires are so funny. A lot of them gave us some really great jokes, some knock-knock jokes at the end. We're going to see if we can bring you some of those at the semifinal round. We learned a lot about these players. <laughs> This is Reagan Porsche. <laughs> First pitch strike to every batter she's faced for Robledo. I like how she's mixing in that changeup too. Just keep it in the back of these hitters' mind. She'll throw it early in the count. She'll throw it with two strikes. No, oh, when you're throwing the ball 60 miles an hour, Amanda, that changeup coming in in the high 40s is, uh, it's got to be respected. There it is again. Yeah. And so she started playing baseball. Jenny Robledo did, and then she made the transition to softball and started pitching when she was seven years old with her pitching coach, Alejandro. Still works with her to this day. Strikeout number three of the game for Robledo. She's able to locate this curveball, a little up in the zone two, throwing it up and in on the hand. She can just spot her pitches so well. I guarantee when Jenny Robledo started that pitch, that is exactly where she wanted to throw it up and in on the hands of that right-handed hitter Porsche. This is Damari Harris at the plate. She is listed at 5'11 at 13 years old. They use her to pitch. They use her at first base. She loves softball so much. That one's bobbled by Hernandez, and the throw is off target. Harris going to second. They rule it a hit. When Damari Harris just... Gets around this ball, hits it into that 5-6 hole. Little bit of a bobble by Hernandez. And the throw slightly offline, but I love the <laughs> I love the fact that Harris, she's just gonna keep going. So she gets a single and advanced to second on the throwing error at third. Yeah, Damari saw that ball down, Michelle, and she didn't even look to see where it was behind the first baseman. She just was like, I'm going to go yeah, to I'm second go right, right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's see if Ava Lesko can help her out. How's it off? Lesko is the youngest player on this River Ridge, Louisiana team. Also plays basketball and volleyball. It's a good swing. Really good swing. Hitters count. She yeah. was ready. And Robledo's been really driving that 
pitch inside underneath the hands of righties. That one was a little bit more over the over the plate. That's the pitch you have to attack and barrel up. Let's see if she goes back underneath the hands. And Lesko is a hitter who's had some big swings for this team, particularly in Waco at their regional. That's the big RBIs in the championship game. Even though she's the youngest, she still finds a way to step up and have to be good at bats. She was five for eight in the regional for Louisiana. With a double, a triple, and three RBIs. She's a player. Yeah. Those are some good numbers. I'll take that. Especially for being the youngest on the team. Oh, just got a piece of it. Went to that changeup. And I love the placement that Robledo threw that. That was just almost like she was going to bounce it in, but throwing it low, knowing that Lesko's been aggressive, and she just barely got a piece of that to stay alive. Still 2 2. Pops a couple of times to Vasquez. A good battle at the plate, but Louisiana will leave a runner in scoring position. No score here in this quarterfinal at Alpenrose. Welcome back to Alpenrose. No score here in the second. You know, Team Mexico has a lucky object. It's different than what you would think. It's a lucky pen. Their assistant coach, Jose Luis, does the score with a black pen. And when they were in Monterey, they won the tournament when he kept score with that pen. But then when they went to regionals, he used a blue pen. And they weren't doing very well. If you look at the scorebook, there were no runs. And so middle of the game, he said, I'm switching back to the other pen. That's when all the runs started to come in. So he told the girls, don't worry. I switched back to the old pen. Our good luck is about to change. It's become so big now that Abril Gomez wants to touch the pen before she goes up so that she'll get a hit. And they've been doing it ever since. You know, you got to stick with what works. What? It doesn't Every run case. out of ink. Yeah, yeah. yeah no kidding. Well, well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think you want it to run out of ink because you're using it, scoring a lot of runs, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> then you have to fill it in, use more ink. Then you have to stop scoring. <laughs> <laughs> That's my probably my favorite superstition that the teams have told us this year. Mm -hmm. The lucky pen. You know, it's surprising when looking at the stats of Mexico for this week, they've given up the same amount of runs that they've scored. So opponents have scored 16 runs against it, and they've scored 16 runs in this tournament. Drop third strike. I thought I heard a foul tip for that one, but that could have been any number of noises that are here at Alvin Rose. But whenever she swung, I thought that I heard just a little tick off the bat. May have gone off the plate. It's a tough play, tough throw for Nelson, the catcher, to get it down to Damari Harris. But really good job of backing up by Reagan Porsche. Out in right field. Ball bag back up. I like to say it all the time on this Little League broadcast. Applies to college, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because sometimes people are like, there's no fan in there. That doesn't, that's not ball bag, be a fan and watch yep. what's going on. It's ball bag and back up. <laughs> <laughs> Triple B. Carolina Sosa has a runner on now. Thanks to that. Drop third strike, run out. Only eight of the ten teams who made it here to Portland have made it to the bracket portion of the tournament after four games in pool play. Good job, good job, Bailey. Good job, good job. It's a great job by Bailey Nelson, the catcher for this Louisiana team, keeping that ball in front, textbook block, moving her body in front of that changeup. Two 
Oh, a fast one hit to Haley Peterson, and they get two. She can hit for the cycle, turn a double play. And this is all about positioning, and Haley Peterson is right where she needs to be. This ball linered right at her. Presence of mind to pick it up and know exactly after making that catch, she's going to go back to her first baseman, Damari Harris, who is covering. Nice double play here in the second inning. You know, I think it's so easy as a base runner to see a line drive and think, yes, that was such a good swing. She connects, I want to run. But as a base runner, when you see a line drive less than two outs, you have to freeze. Maria Jose Olea, it's going to be fast. They do get her. Ava Burkett with a quick throw. Scoreless at Alpen Rose. You know, those softball dreams start somewhere. Maybe it's somewhere like a Little League Softball World Series. Check out some of today's stars' little throwback pictures for you. Look at Jenny Dalton Hill. Love it. Oh, man. One of our broadcasters here at ESPN, Cindy Romero. I just love seeing these stars who are so tough. We watch them on the field, on the international stage, on the collegiate stage. And there they are is this cute little kid who's just falling in love with softball. And Nicole Mendez, somebody who actually plays for Team Mexico on their national team, just got oh. done competing. The Pan American Games, yeah. Lots of opportunities out there for any softballer around the world. Yeah, it's really exciting about I guess this time next year mm -hmm. will be the Tokyo yep. 2020 Olympics and Team USA has qualified. Japan has qualified as the host nation. Italy has qualified. Their little league team is here. here. Which is exciting. Yeah. A little league team out of Milan and national team has qualified for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. They have three spots remaining in those Olympic games, but that's big because girls like the ones playing here can dream about going to the Olympics someday. It's back. At least for 2020. Unfortunately not for 2024. Here's Katie DeLatte getting her first look at Jenny Robledo. So there are we mentioned the three teams that have punched their ticket to the Olympics. There are three spots left and two are going to qualify at that America's qualifier and then one will be from the Asia Oceana qualifier. That America qualifier is up in Canada so probably top three teams with an opportunity to qualify out of there and the, for those two spots are going to be Canada, Puerto Rico and Mexico looking very strong. Can't can't rule out Venezuela though there's, uh, there's going to be some good teams showing up there. And Canada played well in the Pan America games. Yeah, they beat the U.S. Uh, to get to the gold medal game, and then the U.S. came back and beat them in the gold medal game. Another strikeout by the lefty. High heat up in the zone. And this is what Coach Ray talked about a little bit with his team out of Louisiana, wanting them to lie, lay off the high pitches. But Amanda, you know what it's like. <laughs> It looks that so ball <laughs> get, that gets up in your eyes and it's hard not to swing. I, people ask me all the time, how do you how do you hit the high ball or how do you hit the rise ball? I'm like, don't swing at it. <laughs> <laughs> that had to, honestly that had to be my um, my approach when I was in the box because I was not a good rise ball hitter. You know, it, I think you're so much more tempted to swing at it because it's closer to your eyes, it's closer to where your hands are. So you think it's right there. I just want to hit it, but then. Not oftentimes good results come out of that. Olivia Bourgeois with a big cut. Beautiful change up within this at bat that Robledo threw for a strike to a looking strike. We've seen hitters chase that pitch and haven't seen her throw it for a strike too many times where the hitter takes it and it still floats in there beautifully. One last point about those uh, international qualifiers. The other one, the South Pacific, uh, Asia South Pacific, is going to be really tough, too, because you have a very improved China team. You have Australia, who has medaled in every Olympic Games and obviously competed in every Olympic Games. And then New Zealand, also another very strong team. So, Back-to-back -back K's, number five for Robledo. 
Back to the top of this Louisiana order. And on Thursday, Haley Peterson, it was her day when she hit for the cycle with, oh, two home runs. Just throwing her barrel at these pitches, just getting the contact, sweet spot. Well, and you know what's amazing, too, is that that's a cycle with two home runs. So, obviously, it's the five at-bats in a six-inning game. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. I mean, it's hard to do that in a nine-inning game. <laughs> it's so yeah. true. Baseball, right? Peterson, a slow roller to Vasquez. Maria Jose Olea does a nice job of stretching out for it. No score still in this quarterfinal. It's a good stretch by Maria Jose Olea to go up and get this one and get that all important third out. Well, back in 1998 was the last time we saw a team from Mexico City make it here to Portland for the Little League Softball World Series. And how cool is it that this current Team Mexico got to meet some members of that 98 Little League team before they left to come to Portland, Oregon? Yeah, that 98 team wants to play the 2019 yeah. team whenever they return <laughs> back from Portland. I so maybe it. should we get down there and cover that and put it on um, ESPN Plus? Yes. I don't know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That Little is trip awesome. to Mexico City. Now you know they're all moms and have sons and daughters and are fully supporting this team here. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Well, and that's where we're finally at. We finally have a generation of female um, athletes that played the sport that now have daughters that are playing the sport. And you know, I think about my mom. My mom never had the opportunity to play sports. It was pre, you know, '72 when Title IX was signed in, and all of a sudden, women's team sports started to explode on the scene. So it's really exciting now that we're we're starting to have moms have their daughters out there playing ball when they were athletes themselves. It was so cool they got the chance to meet at a baseball game that was being played in Mexico City. Yeah, there was a reporter in Mexico City that did something about this team and somehow the reporter got the 98 team involved and got them to meet before that first pitch that you're talking about. That is so cool to me. Wow. Abril Gomez will take a seat. Number four for Kayla Giardina. Well, the journey to the Little League World Series starts in T-Ball. Visit littleleague.org slash T-Ball to learn how to give the youngest Little Leaguers the opportunity to have fun and learn the game. I don't know if you can play T-Ball just yet, buddy. Hey, three years away? <laughs> Damari Harris makes the toss to get Nora Lopez. Damari Harris is going to come in. I love the fact that she immediately comes in, gets the ball, bobbles it a little bit, but she waits for Haley Peterson to come over tagging, uh, to, uh, to, to be able to tag the base or make that play. Uh, a little bit of a, I like to say you use a dart throw when you're that close. Because it's easy to throw it past your teammate, but they get the job done. Very good execution. We've seen really good bunt defenses here. Yes. They've, they've covered a bunt very well. Good and, throws. Good and bunting. And bunting, too. Yep. Valeria Vasquez. Lusco's throw is low, but it's scooped by Harris. Louisiana takes care of three. We're moving on. Baseball. It allows you to lose yourself in a dream. To feel and remember a season of life when summer lasted forever. Have fun playing baseball. It's never going to be any better than this. Little League Baseball World Series takes over Williamsport Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can catch the action on ESPN. Of course, you can see all the games on the app. We're going to see Team Italy in our final quarterfinal. A little pregame meal. Traditional ballpark food. <laughs> they will face the team from Hawaii later tonight. <laughs> the concession stand is stacked here. Yes. Ice cream, hamburgers, hot dogs. Good eats. Did you eat anything specific before you guys played? Did you have a, or did you not eat? 
I was more likely to not eat. N not like the whole day or something, right. but to eat like right before the game. Yeah, I usually ate about four hours ahead of time. Yeah. This is Ava Palumbo, who's coming to pinch hit for Louisiana. Remember, we have minimum mandatory play. So everybody gets to play. So you're going to start seeing a lot of substitutions at this point in the game. It's another one of those games where a ball is yet to be hit out of the infield. Got some strikeouts and quite a few ground outs. And the one hit that we've had has been an infield single. Coach has told us that Eva Plumbo is the fastest on the team, plays basketball and runs track. Lopez did a nice job of grabbing that one behind the plate. So all the outfielders are playing at a, a different distance from the plate. You have the left fielder, Aguilar, who's playing basically with her back against the fence. The center fielder, Gomez, kind of playing in between. And the right fielder, Sosa, super shallow out there in right field. And usually you would think it might be the other way around because of the speed of your pitcher. Robleo, you, know, you yeah. would think the balls are going to be sprayed the opposite way. It was that everybody was playing the same distance the left fielder Aguilar yeah. was playing, and now the right side started to skew in a little, bit. a little bit. This is a pretty big outfield, too. It's 209 to all fields. But we've seen five home runs this week, which is a lot comparative to the previous yeah, 20 years or so I've been here. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't have any in the bracket portion last year. Ball four, and Plumbo will take her base, the first walk by Robledo today. So really good at bat, coming in to be a pinch hitter, going up against a pitcher like Jenny Robledo, seeing a lot of pitches, working the count, and then finding a way on to lead off the inning for your team. Here's the pitcher, Kayla Giardina. Runner going. They're going to try to get her. She's safe. Nora Lopez behind the dish gets a nice throw down, but you got to love the turnover rate. Look at the way she gets into the bag. Tag is a little bit short. She's definitely the fastest, one of the fastest on the team. Lopez has been able to pick up a couple of runners in this tournament. Opponents are now six of eight on the base paths against Mexico. The bunt from Giardina. And Blumbo gets to third. Lovely selfless at bat there by Kayla Giardina, who's hitting the three spot. She's a pitcher. You know that she wants a bat in her hands and to come up and get the big hit to push that run across. But instead, she selflessly lays that bunt down beautifully to be able to advance Palumbo 60 feet with her sacrifice bunt. Well, especially with one out. I love the fact they steal her down to second and then bunt her over to third. This is the shortstop, Ava Burkett. Her favorite athlete is Kelly Barnhill. 
We have a Kelly Barnhill throwback picture or picture somewhere. Yeah. Picture, picture. Yeah. The picture is not of her being a pitcher is the thing. Exactly. Good one. <laughs> yeah, you showed that to us yesterday. I couldn't figure out who it was at first. I could see like I knew her in the eyes, like she looked familiar. Oh, the bat threw us off. That's what it That's was. That's right. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly gave a couple of good pitch, uh, pictures. Sorry. You yeah. pitches. Pictures. One where she's actually swinging and one where she's just holding the bat. Great shot from Ava Burkett, a run scores. She does not beat the throw, but still puts that run on the board. But Burkett is just gonna shoot this ball down the line. Pitch on the outside corner, it's actually a ball off the plate. You talk about hitting a bad pitch and hitting it well. Burkett does just that. She shoots it right past the first baseman. Easily gonna score her teammate. Louisiana. <laughs> Up by a run. <laughs> Got to make sure you touch the home plate. <laughs> Just double checked. <laughs> Went back and tapped it again. It's a big time swing. When you have a pitcher's duel like this, you guys, that could be the game. That could be the game winning yeah. run. She hit that ball hard. We're talking about how shallow that Sosa was playing out in right field. And because she was playing so shallow, she was able to come up and make that throw to first. Yeah, that was a great play by the right fielder, Sosa. Pinch hitter Maddie Branch in for Louisiana. Two outs. Vasquez all over it. Not before Louisiana plates one in a close game. Here's how the bracket looks right now at Portland, Oregon at the Little League Softball World Series. Oregon and North Carolina will be our first semifinal tomorrow at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Who will be in our second? Louisiana's got a 1-0 lead over Mexico right now. As we move over to the bottom of the fourth inning, and it's been really close. Lots of young fans coming out to watch. It's so neat to see. I've been talking to some of the, the kids in the stands. They're from Oregon. They're from around here. You know, they're supporting their, their brothers and sisters on some of these teams watching. Some of them don't have any ties but they just want to come out and watch softball. Kionis is retired. Now we go pitcher versus pitcher as Jenny Robledo steps in. She got a single and advanced to second on an error in the first. Loving the way that both pitchers are thrown in this game. Continuing to find the strike zone, great command. Mix in their off-speed pitch here and there. And very few walks. Seeing a lot of great pitching today. So fun. It's nice to see. It's amazing how much progress I feel like we're seeing year after year. This is my third event, third year doing this event, and I just feel like the softball gets better and better. Robledo with her second hit and it's still rolling looking for two the base just went into the grass <laughs> yeah. Louisiana was playing Robledo towards the opposite side and she gets a pitch on the outside corner and finds the right center field gap when they were shifted towards the left side. So that ball got past Porsche in right field and Bourgeois was playing in left center field. Goes for extra bases for this Mexico team and pitchers continue to be on a roll offensively here at the World Series. That is her second double here in Portland. So guys, she's got a single and a double. Uh oh, they're saying. 
Got to make sure that base is in there a little deeper. All right. On it. I wonder if fans have a lucky pen, like Team Mexico. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, when they keep score in the stands. I have a bag full of different color pens. Mm -hmm. Put it in there, mix it up with the other pens, give off the good juju. Ju yes. ju ju. Yeah. <laughs> Jose Luis Robledo told us he had a special spot for it in his, his binder. Marion Hernandez. Ooh, in foul territory. Katie DeLatte reaches for it. Great grab. Great concentration to get that ball. She's looking up into the sun. Look at the way she's going to drift over. And that's so close, you have to make that catch. Even if the runner was on third base, I think you can't. With, with your eyes up in the air, you can't chance letting that ball drop, thinking, all right, I don't, I don't want the, the runner to tag. Now, obviously, the runner's at second, and more than likely, she'll be able to throw her out. But that's great concentration on a ball that's hit close to the line, into the sun, wall approaching. Really good effort. And a close game. I mean, yeah. you know that you're only up by one run. You've got to make that play. That's an important second out. And that's where communication from your teammates as well. You've got room, you've got room, or you know, at times when you do need to let a foul ball drop. All that stuff is so important on every single play. So there's two outs for Gallo Marquez with Robledo on second. She's got one hit this week. It was against Iowa. Good swing. She's all the way in the back of the box, respecting the fact that Giardina throws with a little bit of power. Bailey Nelson got to run out there, make sure nobody's advancing 60 feet on her call. Leo shakes back to second base. Count stays a ball and two strikes. Be a good time to mix in a change up, possibly one that's you're shooting for low, and even though there's two strikes, you still have to throw that ball to first base for a drop third strike, but you could get her to swing and miss that pitch. We're up in the zone, and Marquez is getting her, getting her barrel to some of these pitches that are up in the zone. Even on that one, she was shaking her hand yeah. a little bit because you could tell that she got jammed. <laughs> Battling. Hits it right to Damari Harris, and Mexico leaves a runner in scoring position. Louisiana leads it 1-0. Such a unique site for the Little League Softball World Series. Alpen Rose Dairy, it is a working dairy farm. You got the milk, the ice cream, all of the goodies plus some fantastic softball. What more could you ask for? <laughs> We've seen some great pitching from both Kayla Giardina and Ginny Robledo. Uh, you could ask for another pitcher's duel. That's what I would yeah, ask for. Well, we got I one more game. Do. <laughs> I don't know. I could ask for a little ice cream to be served while you're watching the pitcher's duel. Oh. No, oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I saw some of our crew in between games eating, eating a little ice cream, and I was like, it's always interesting to watch what people uh, order, like what their flavors are. Little pick-me-up. It says Libby Duthu is coming to pinch hit. What flavor are you going to try, Michelle? Um, I think I like that. Um, it wasn't boysenberry. What was the berry one I like? 
costume. It's like a Marion Barry. Marion Barry. There you go. Yeah. Because I think it won the bracket challenge. Courtney remembers all things ice cream, she even does. though she's even lactose. Though it makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, the most popular flavor here, I've told, is bubble gum. Oh. Because of all the young kids. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Although Ooh. shaved ice has seemed to be... Marion Berry, there it is. Che- Marion Cheesecake, that's the one I think I like. <laughs> is there oh. bubblegum pieces bubble gum in, right there. The bubble, in the ice cream, Chris? Would you like me to go find out for you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's hardcore reporting right there. <laughs> Man, all of those sound good. I don't... I, so uh, this is what happens to me. I end up not making a choice because I can't decide, so I end up not having any of them. What's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> Seriously. We have two more days. Or there's, a, there's a possibility she could mooch off of all of our yeah. cups oh, yes. and eat everybody's. <laughs> we possibility call, or probability? Yeah. We, we call Amanda mooch sometimes because you order something at dinner and she'll say, ooh, that looks really good. Oh, did yes. you, do you want some, Amanda? My taste buds are so <laughs> curious. That's that's called being this looks that, awesome. playing a team sport. Because when you play team sports, you're always either eating other people's so leftovers or you're trying their food and... Yeah, it's the best part of team sports. And in school, it was all about the trade. Yeah. Hey, I'll trade you this for that. Yep. Three balls, two strikes to Libby Duthu. Good job by Libby to come in and run it to a full count. <laughs> Trying to make something happen here in this fifth inning. <laughs> the double scoop. <sighs> Strikeout for Robledo, number six. You know, both the pinch hitters who've stepped in, it was Palumbo earlier and now Duthu were smaller in stature, and it's like Robledo had a hard time finding the bottom of the zone, but full count, and she finds it right at the knees for a looking strikeout. There's Ava Lusco. She ended up grounding out to the shortstop, but she had a really good battle with Robledo back in that second inning. Rolls it to right. And the throw pulls Jose Olea off the bag. So let's go safe. I guess now we know why Carolina is Sosa out there in right field is playing so close to first base, Michelle. Good job of getting this immediately, throwing it in. Had a chance if that throw was a little bit lower, may have had a chance to record the out. It would have been her second nine to three <laughs> put out. Nice arm out there and right. Louisiana is going to use a special pinch runner. Ava Palumbo. They get two special pinch runners per game. You can only use one per inning. Claire Murphy will be the pinch hitter now with Palumbo on first. Murphy, a 333 hitter this week. First hit came against Italy. Larvi on single. Nora Lopez is really keeping an eye on Palumbo at first. Yeah. 
Louisiana fans are getting a little yeah. all fired up. And got the lead, and they're like, all right, let's go. Cheering on Claire. Um, Claire has her own cheer. And it, it's easy. You just say Claire. <laughs> louder and louder. <laughs> well, here we go. Runner going. <laughs> Palumbo slid in and the base came off, so she was holding on to it as it was moving. <laughs> Pitch loan outside right at the knees. Great location. Love the way Lopez comes up. Trying for a strike him out, throw him out. But Palumbo just getting in there a little bit too quickly. She's got good wheels. This is Olivia Bourgeois. Two outs and Palumbo in scoring position. Oh, straight to Vasquez. Flashes the glove for out number three. Bourgeois smokes this ball, but it's right at Vasquez. Who's there for the third out? Welcome back to Portland. Louisiana leads at one nothing here in the bottom of the fifth. And this Louisiana team says they are the closest that they've ever been and that their team chemistry is fantastic, which is why they've gotten this far. But it's thanks to Mother Nature. During their state tournament, Hurricane Barry rolled through, so they were forced to stay in the hotel for two whole days. So what do you do when you're stuck in a hotel? Well, luckily you have a bunch of friends to hang out with, and because of that, they kind of developed this close-knit group. Chris, I thought it was hilarious that Ray Windell, the manager, told us, you know, when it was just raining outside and it wasn't lightning, he said, all right, guys, we're going to go practice catching wet balls and working in the rain. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 50 mile an hour winds blowing, and Coach Windell said, this is great practice time. Why does that not surprise me? He, he, but he was like, <laughs> hey, he's like, we had fun. We had a blast. It was better than sitting in a hotel. I'm like, yeah. That's definitely, that's like a Florida, Louisiana type mentality yeah. that you're like, eh, hurricane, that's all right. Yeah. Let, let hurricane party. Exactly. Just, we're going to go out and play some ball in the middle of it. But it does bring up a good point. You're going to fight conditions whenever you're playing an outside sport, like wind, like rain. And you've got to be able to still perform and pitch with a wet ball, throw yes. with a wet ball, pitch against the wind. I, I mean, so I, I love the fact that he got them out there. I mean, they didn't have anything else to do, and it wasn't yeah. lightning. It was just raining. Hey, let's go practice. Yeah, that's the key is the lightning. And so you go out there, and because there's times that you're definitely going to have to throw with a wet ball in a game. And I, I used to do that. I used to practice all the time because in Japan, we would literally play in downpours in the professional league over there. I mean, downpours. Like, my feet, would the, the water would be above my ankles. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because <laughs> I needed to get the game in. Hurricane <laughs> Barry wouldn't have had anything on you, Michelle. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I'd have been like, 50 mile an hour winds, whatever. <laughs> Another strikeout. These pitchers are getting it done. Well, that, that, that time in the hotel has got to be really key, too, because keep in mind, these are mostly all-star teams so they're yes. a makeup of players who play on different teams some maybe some go to the same school but maybe they they don't or they play travel ball with different players so it's getting used to your teammates and that's been a valuable experience Camila Olayo pinch hitting now for Mexico <laughs> and Kayla Giardina just continues to pound the strike zone, throwing a lot of strikes. Coming into this inning, she had only thrown eight balls the entire game. And now it's just 11. That's crazy. 
Wow. So when they lost out at the World Series last year, Kayla Giardina was a pitcher on that team, and she got to experience the World Series here. This one's hit back to her. The journey to the Little League World Series starts in T-Ball. You can visit littleleague.org slash T-Ball to learn how to give the youngest Little Leaguers the opportunity to have fun and learn the game. And she told her dad, <laughs> <laughs> Kayla Giardina, after they lost out, that she was determined to get back here. Yeah. After they lost out, she was right here at the Sam Field here in Portland. She looked at her dad and she's like, Dad, I'm coming back here next year. And not only am I going to come back here next year, but I'm going to throw 60 miles an hour and work so hard. That is my goal. I love it. And she vocalized it. And yeah. she worked the entire year to get that done. And that's what it takes. You have to be that committed. You have to vocalize it so that everybody holds you accountable. Not just your parents, your teammates. And you're leading your teammates and telling them, this is what I expect. And look at the gun, 63 miles an hour. Because you can say that you want something, yeah. but if you're not going to work for it, then it ain't going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's that leadership that when you're out there working and you're vocalizing it, your teammates hear it. And they're like, all right, well, I'm jumping on this train. And, you know, I would do the same thing at the Pro League in Japan. I would tell my Japanese teammates what we were going to do. I want to win a championship. You have to continue to say that. It's so important at any level for people and teams to hear that. A little reminder is for why it is that you're working. Because exactly. it's easy the day after you lose out. All right, I, I know that I'm working to get back to Portland. But during Hurricane Barry, during Christmas time, when you don't really want to go out and practice, like, what's your motivation? What's your end goal? What's your end game? What are you working for? So you don't feel like you did last year when you lost that game. Exactly. Giardina feeling pretty good with that strikeout. Number six for her. Two have come in this inning. Giardina saying it, saying it, getting it done, using all of her pitches. Great location. Louisiana still up. Team Mexico does this every time they take the field. They all come and touch home plate. Pretty cool. I love it when teams have routines. Some will say it's a superstition. I like routines. I'm all about do the same thing every time, whether you're not in, in practice, if you're in a regional game, a district game, a Little League World Series game, because then your, your body is comfortable. You're like, hey, this is a routine. We do this all the time. It helps calm the nerves and get you focused. I did it. Did you have any? Re I, I always jumped over the chalk line. I never touched the chalk line. Same. Yeah. No, that was for sure. Because you know the chalk line is going to be there no yeah. matter what field you're at yeah. or how big the game is. Well, and for me, it was like my mental cue that like I was jumping into my job. It was time to go to work. And so that was the mental mm. meaning of it for me. It was like I was jumping onto that field and it was the cue to be like, all right, turn it on. Engage the mechanism. <laughs> Without saying engage the mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> You know, from that movie. Game time. For the love of the game? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Louisiana's trying to add to its lead here. Remember, we only play six innings in Little League. This is the top of the order with Haley Peterson. Robledo starts with a strikeout. Eight strikeouts for Robledo. Robledo throwing that change up and getting an aggressive Haley Peterson out in front of that pitch. And man, that just fell off the table. Robledo has thrown so well. The only runner that has scored has been that leadoff walk, that top of the fourth that she gave up to Palumbo. She's just scattered two hits. It's been outstanding. You know, coming into today, she had a tournament high for strikeouts in a game with 12 strikeouts against Iowa. And then, of course, we just saw Campbell Shane get 12 strikeouts. They're the only two pitchers. We've seen a couple of shutouts so far today. And at this point, Mexico's getting shut out. They still have three more outs to play with. And they'll have nine, one, and two coming up in the bottom of the six.
Nora Lopez is going to come out and talk to Jenny Robledo. And her dad, Jose Luis, is the one that has the lucky pin, Robledo's dad. Told us she was born in Texas. As you said, Michelle, she wants to come play college softball in the States. Which I love. And, you know, when you see that from the young girls around the world, we've seen that even with some of the uh, European girls who have come over and played in the U.S. collegiate system. I love it. That's what this game is about. Oh, and Robledo took a hard hit in that collision. Glad to see her get up. Wow. Whew. It was called runner interference. Yeah. Yeah, that was Bailey Nelson, who mm -hmm. was the one who ran into her, the catcher for the Louisiana team, coming out to shake her hand. That's important to remember, if you're a hitter, that you have to give way to the defenders who are going after a ball. Otherwise, it is called uh, interference, runner interference. Try to work your way around them. Always important to try to run with that head up and see what's going on. Because ultimately, defenders always are looking at the ball, so they can't always be seeing where the runner is. The runner has more of an opportunity to do that. Now it's two away for Kayla Giardina with nobody on. Shapiro makes the toss. Turned it over and grabbed it. Great foot by, footwork by Shapiro going up the middle. Good glove work. Look at the way she's going to go get this ball. Glove it. And just to be sure, she says, I'm going to go throw it to first anyway. Make sure it's an out-out. Well, after Monday Night Baseball at Sports Center with Michael Eaves and Zubin Mahenti, they'll break down Orioles Yankees with the Bronx Bombers looking to add to their home run record. Plus, a one on one interview with Saquon Barkley, how he's filling the void Odell Beckham Jr. left behind, and the best matchups of the upcoming NBA season. Sports Center after Red Sox Indians on ESPN and, of course, on the ESPN app. Last chance here for Team Mexico, a spot in the semifinals on the line. Nora Lopez, the number nine hitter. The catcher will lead off against Kayla Giardina, who's been fantastic today for Louisiana. Oh, she's kept the ball down, worked both sides of the plate at the corners. It's all about being able to finish it. To me, this yeah. is the hardest inning that you see athletes try to get through. It's just that final three outs, especially in a close game. Yeah, and a lot of times it's third, possibly fourth time through the lineup. And once Lopez is up, it will be third time through the lineup. And you'd have to imagine that the pressure, you have to pick between the two teams and who the pressure is on. The pressure is on Louisiana. They were here yeah. last year. 
Half their team has been here in this field, played in this tournament. They finished third. They actually thought that they had a chance to win it all last year. They're extremely frustrated with the fact that they lost, and they wanted a chance to get back here and win it all. Seventh strikeout for Kayla Giardina. It's like a curveball that moves a little bit away from Lopez. Some late break, getting that nine hole and the important leadoff out. Seventh strikeout of the game. And it ties her personal best here at the World Series. She did it against Oregon, too. This is Valeria Vasquez back to the top of the order for Mexico. But considering this is a Mexico team coming into this game that only struck out 11 times in their first four games, had six hitters in their lineup batting over 300. Giardina has done a good job of scattering a couple hits, limiting threats, limiting free passes. And that's really the key. That's the difference in the game right now is a leadoff walk that came around to score. And Mexico hasn't gotten a runner to third base nope. against Giardina in this Louisiana defense. Well, Giardina, she's, she's not walked a, a batter, so put those two things together and it's tough to score. Louisiana has retired six straight. And Louisiana also has been able to use multiple pitchers where Kayla Giardina is coming into this, what, the fifth day of this tournament, and she had only thrown 10 innings. Yeah. Been able to use Haley Peterson, been able to use Damari Harris. <laughs> but for Mexico, it just takes someone getting on base. Yeah. It's giving your team a little bit of hope. And you're at the top of your lineup right now with Vasquez, who has a little bit of power, has a little bit of speed. You know she's going to fight up in the box. She's your leadoff hitter. Used to seeing a lot of pitches. Full count to Vasquez. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Hits it back to Giardina. Two down. It was a great battle between Vasquez and Giardina in that one. It's on Dewey Shapiro. Team Mexico's hopes resting in her hands at the plate. Hits it to Harris. For the final out, Louisiana going back to the semifinals. An outstanding effort by both of these teams. Team Mexico having a very good tournament here. And of course for Louisiana, you could tell they were on a mission after what happened last year. But outstanding effort for Louisiana. We're learning in these bracket games, you guys, that there is very little room for error. Whether it's a walk or an error, these games have all been so tight. And the pitchers are stepping up. This is our third shutout of the day so far. So Louisiana is going to take it one nothing. Kayla Giardina, just fantastic. Seven strikeouts to help Louisiana move on to the semifinal. They're going to face the winner of our final game. One more game today, Hawaii taking on Italy. That'll be coming up at 10 Eastern on ESPN News. Chris is down on the field with Kayla Giardina. Kayla, fantastic outing for you today. Of all your pitches, what was working for you best? Curveball. Yeah. Did you feel it going into today? Yes, ma'am. I felt loose as soon as the game started, and even if I knew I missed my spot, I knew my defense was going to get it. You were here last year, lost in the semis. What did you work on over the offseason to get back to this point? Um, as soon as we lost, I set a goal for myself to hit 60 by the time I got back here. And and then I worked, and then me and my defense worked, and we just got 10 times better. Did you hit 60, and when did you do it? Uh, I think I hit 60. I'm not sure which game, but I'm pretty sure they said I hit it. 
What did you learn from last year in the semifinals that you'll take into tomorrow's game? It's not going to be easy, but the entire game you have to work 100%. And finally, your team chemistry, you watch you guys, you're constantly cheering. How did you get to become such close friends? Um, even outside of softball, we all still hung out. We did several parties at one of our girls' house, and we just hung out 24-7, even after practices, before practices. Awesome. Congratulations, Kayla. I appreciate it. Thank you. Courtney? Oh, man, what a great outing for Kayla Giardina. She was locked in. Yeah, she was using the bottom of the zone. She talked about using her curveball, and she really, we really saw her do that to right-handed hitters, Michelle. Well, you have to locate that pitch as well. She went upstairs a little bit. I love the fact that she had that confidence. Her defense, she knew, was behind her. And when you're throwing as a confident pitcher in the circle, you're going to get the job done. So Team Mexico, a really great run. They went undefeated in their region to make it to Portland. Their run will end in the quarterfinals. But how about Louisiana moving on in a close battle? A 1-0 win sends them to the semifinals. They will face Hawaii or Italy tomorrow night with a spot in the championship on the line. We still have one more game for you. It's coming up at 10 Eastern here on ESPN News. We'll have Hawaii taking on Italy at the Little League Softball World Series.